reminder that we have, still have another week of our Lenten services. Uh, next week, if you come, it's a, we, as we do on the last Wednesday of Lent, we have a cookout. So we got the grill going today. Got the grill out today, and ready to go. So come and join us next week as well. Um, so we we gather this night, and we, we begin with the confession and forgiveness found printed on page 201, 211 in the front of the hymnal. Please rise as you are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the glory to God found in the bottom of 213.
Breathe upon us the power of your spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. Our reading today is from Acts chapter 2. The community continually committed themselves to learning, the learning what the apostles taught them, gathering for fellowship, breaking bread, and praying. Everyone felt a sense of awe because the apostles were doing many signs and wonders among them. There was an intense sense of togetherness among those, all of those who believed. They shared all the material possessions and trust. They sold any possessions and goods that did not benefit the community and used the money to help everyone in need. They were unified as they worshipped at the temple day after day. In homes, they broke bread and shared meals with glad and sincere hearts. The new disciples praised God and they enjoyed the goodwill of all the people in the city. Day after day, the Lord added to their numbers everyone who was experiencing liberation. Here ends the reading. So just what is spiritual friendship? Now as I went back to read, read this chapter as we we're going through the book of Power Surge, it reminded me of a couple different things. Now, the first thing that came to my mind was actually this, this scripture reading. Now in the reading, we have a multitude of believers who are in community together. Day by day, they spend time together and they eat together. The community is a community of believers with sincere hearts. Being this close, doing so much together, you cannot tell me that there was not conversation around who God is, who Jesus is, and who the Holy Spirit is. The community is not one in isolation, but through fellowship, they are insulated from the effects of the outside world. What is Christian fellowship? It's a time of discussion, a time of togetherness, by other Christians centered where? On Christ. This centering is where the conversations should be. The centering of fellow Christians is a perfect opportunity, perfect opportunity to share, to explore one's spirituality, to question, to expand the knowledge of who God is and what God is doing and how we can respond. It's during this fellowship time that we are protected from the outside world. Because the darkness of the world tells us that faith, God, spirituality are not to be the norm. Often, though, we find that Christian fellowship sometimes starts to conform to the secular ideas and no longer is centered upon Christ. I've heard it said, fellowship has become a, a, a mean and noisy after session at church with coffee, cookies, lots of idle channel about everything on earth but, everything on earth but the spiritual things. I've seen it the other way around too, but I've also been taken part in fellowship where I've witnessed things are not centered on Christ. We just talk to a chit chat about things going on around us, but not Christ centered. This should be a time for fostering spiritual friendship. How many Christians now in our homes even know how to converse about Jesus Christ? In the book of Power Surge that we've been going through for the, the six steps of, uh, of discipleship, it says that spiritual friends pray for each other, encourage each other, share insights in Scripture, and help one another reflect on the ways God is present and active in their lives. The second thing that I thought of when rereading this chapter was all the spiritual friendships that I've had in the past, and I certainly have, about the friends that I've had, the prayers that I've shared, the reflections of what God is doing. And if I go back and think about that, I wouldn't be standing here even today if I didn't have those spiritual friendships. But maybe I might even better off saying that those spiritual friendships are what kept me on the track despite me wanting to fight against what God was calling me to do. Fellowship. 
Spiritual friendship is more than just friendship. But it's also not less than friendship. God is always working the world. And seeing this, seeing this through our own eyes, but also through another's, a spiritual friend, allows us to experience the kingdom of heaven, not only here and now, but in the future as well. It's when people ignore this common life as a Christian family. They become isolated. And often find it difficult to even sustain a living faith. Where people are no longer, where people no longer share regularly in the breaking of bread. They are failing to raise the flag, which is Jesus' death and resurrection are the center, the center of everything that we do. We can be devoted to our prayers and read the Bible and attend worship and be committed to service to others. And all these marks of discipleship that we've been going through are good, great even. But if they're not centered in Christ, if they're not centered in Christ, we don't have the spiritual friends. We can stray. We can stray from these marks, and if we're straying, then we're straying off the path of discipleship. Without the spiritual friends, discernment of God and what God is doing today becomes cloudy. Without spiritual friendship, we can get lost. Spiritual friendship is crucial, crucial in maintaining our sense of direction upon the road of discipleship that we are looking to travel down and seeing what God is up to in the world today. Spiritual friends help us keep Sings the bones. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn number 650 in the Christ of the East and East West. If you please rise and pray.
Let us pray. Grace and thanks to you, O holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, brought forth life into being. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on a desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh. You speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, a way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. We kindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. Deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. We join together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Peace of the Lord be with you all. We share God's peace with those of us. 